Things on this channel have gotten a bit bleak with all the talk of Trump and Elon and climate catastrophe. So let's take a much needed palate cleanser in the form of a story from over in the UK that's just dumb as hell, but also pretty much harmless. Mm. Uh, American media is correctly perceived to be designed to appeal to the lowest common denominator, but people in the UK are in absolutely no position to cast stones from their glass house. There's a tabloid saga that has been going on over there for nearly two years that has somehow dominated all forms of media, and thankfully, we've only just now become aware of it on this side of the pond and can take in the whole thing all at once. Yeah. Back in October of 2021, the TV show This Morning, basically their version of Good Morning America, decided to bring on a Halloween-appropriate guest to fill their airtime. A 38-year-old goth chick and singer-songwriter named Brocard with one hell of a story. Brocard revealed that she was in a romantic relationship with a ghost that had been haunting her home. His name is Eduardo, and he was a soldier during the Victorian era. Eduardo's introduction into Brocard's life was typical haunting stuff, but once his intentions became clear, apparently it was just a whirlwind romance. After that interview aired, many in the UK were like, well, hmm, that was weird. Bit of a weird story, but okay. But chronicling Brocard and Eduardo's romance quickly became a national pastime for the UK's many tabloid rags. Yeah, they've definitely got us beat on that. Um... Their tabloids get... Intense. Print media, I, print media is pretty much dead worldwide, but um, they're keeping it going over there by just publishing absolute trash that they know the people of the UK want to just gobble up. Well, that's also the they, the only place you'll really find this in America is maybe Chicago, but definitely New York, where you have high traffic areas like subway or metro stations. Yeah, and you do see newspaper stands still. Uh, especially in London, outside the tube, because people need something to read on the tube. It is very funny that the New York Post has managed to somewhat, like, rebrand itself as a kind of serious outlet, uh, yeah. but in fact still, like... It's a tabloid. It's, it's 90% just absolute fucking trash. Yeah, it's something that you read and go, huh, on the subway, uh, because that's the only way... Yeah. That's where you buy print stuff anymore uh, in public, aside from, like, you yeah. know, a bookstore, if you go out of your way. But that's why it works in London and New York. Yeah. Anyway, immediately following that interview, uh, the Daily Mirror reported that things between Brocard and Eduardo were already on the rocks. Uh oh. I truly feel like I'm being ghosted by a ghost, she said. Eduardo seems furious with me since I've gone public with our romance. He's gone completely cold. Usually his presence surrounds me with a warmth, but now a cold breeze follows me around the house. He's costing me a fortune in heating. Even with a fire roaring and the thermostat on full blast, it's like the Antarctic. I've had to resort to sleeping in a ski suit and a bobble hat, and when he touches me, it feels like shards of ice piercing my soul. She said, I can sense his anger. I've felt myself being pushed across the room, and he's pushed me to the floor on one occasion. I've tried to communicate with him via candlelight, but he no longer flickers the flame. It just blows out. As Halloween approaches, the singer is determined to win back her spirit lover's affections. I'm going to light a hundred candles and scatter rose petals. I may even cook him some typical Victorian dishes to win back his heart. Maybe some sheep's trotters or a boiled calf's head, if I can find that in my local supermarket. If not, I'll have to stick to something more simple, like a stew or a soup, although I fear it will pass straight through him. <laughs> Lady. I'm gonna feed this ghost. It's just gonna go get gonna get everywhere. It's just gonna get fucking everywhere. You know, you know why he's doing this, why he's going so cold, is because this Victorian era soldier has been sleeping around the community, haunting numerous women. Yeah, you think and they found out, they they obviously saw this, they found out, and all of a sudden, oh, oh, okay, so I'm not the special one that you've been haunting in particular. You've been haunting how many other women? Right. This is just the one a uh, goth chick who decided to go public with it. You think Eduardo's been dead for like 150 years and he's just now found the one? No. No. Gr girl? Girl? He is uh, he's, he's, a, he's a serial seducer, this uh, Eduardo. Ma'am, I've just checked your, your, your samples and it looks like you have spiritual chlamydia. <laughs> You've got... A raging case of spiritual chlamydia. Yeah. The good thing is the symptoms invisible, much yeah. like ghosts. But it's trust, all, it's all up here. But it's, it's happening. It's yes. ravaging your spiritual uh, re reproductive system. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe boiling a fucking lamb's head or whatever will uh, will fix this. 
Is that yeah. what they ate back then? Jesus. I, You know, British food today, not great. But apparently, we, we're not giving them enough credit for uh, vastly improving them up on how things You think work. this sucks now? <laughs> you should have seen what we've been eating in the past. Jesus Christ. God, take it easy on us. <laughs> You know, uh, well, whatever she ended up doing, it seems that she and her Victorian ghost boyfriend did manage to patch things up. Ooh, delicious boiled head. <laughs> if I, I don't mind Everyone if I do. Everyone knows the way to a ghost's heart is a boiled head. Uh-huh. Uh, when the Brits next heard from Brocade, it was the announcement that she and Eduardo were getting married. This announcement came via another appearance on This Morning, which was followed up by more tabloid coverage, like this piece in The Sun. Singer Brocard tied the knot with her ghost lover hours after frightening Holly Willoughby live on this morning. Brocard, 38, who fell in love with the spirit of a Victorian soldier named Eduardo, appeared on the flagship ITV daytime show on Halloween to share the details of their nuptials. Brocard then made her way to the Asylum Chapel in Peckham, London to marry her ghost fiancé in a private ceremony, presided over by celebrant Dave Octave. The singer walked down the aisle to her own song, Haunted, which she penned to celebrate her paranormal pledge of love. After the 30-minute ceremony, she said, Eduardo was making sure I knew he was there throughout the ceremony by whispering things in my ear and gently nudging me. I was so grateful Eduardo turned up and didn't leave me standing at the altar. It feels amazing that I am finally his wife. No, 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 you don't understand. He's actually here in spirit because he is a spirit. Yeah. You don't see him. But he's here. And no, I'm not being stood up. This is actually the happiest day of my life. I'm so, so happy. Anyways, this is about to be the happiest day of your life because I've got a brand new track that I'm about to debut yeah. for everyone in also, attendance. Also, yeah, I, I don't think I can play this woman's music, but it sounds basically exactly like what you think it does. It's like... Uh, it's I don't like, know, goth goes two ways. Is it like The Cure or is it techno? Um, it goes a third way. It sounds kind of like corn, but like with all of the, all of the coolness and edginess taken out. Oh. And all of her videos are very like uh, spooky haunted house themed mm -hmm. Victorian ghost stuff. Well, because it's, um, so, it's filmed by Eduardo. He doesn't know how to work the camera. He doesn't. No. Uh, you know, where's the, where's the <laughs> crank? Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it is interesting that um, this woman who has embraced this, you know, Every day is Halloween lifestyle just mm -hmm. happens to be the one that the ghost uh, decides to, to get with. It's weird how that happens. Ghosts have tastes, and they know um, goth chicks are down. They are down. They're like... You don't have to explain as much to them. Yeah. Normal chicks, they ask a lot of questions. Goth chicks, they're kind of ready. Yeah. Normal chicks, hey, what are you doing? You're a ghost. Get out of here. Goth chicks are I'm easy terrified of you. when you're a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, if you're wondering what a wedding ceremony between a human woman and a Victorian ghost looks like, here you go. Eduardo, do you take Ricard to be your partner in the adventure that lies ahead? Do you promise to walk side by side to the ends of the earth? To love, encourage and support each other in every endeavour? Do you commit to opening yourself up completely and sharing your entire beings together? to share laughter as well as tears. Do you take Ricard to be your partner from now until the end of time? He does. <laughs> wow, isn't that just beautiful? You can feel the love. Unfortunately though, a few months later, it was reported that, uh, reported again in the press, hot off the presses that this relationship was once again on the rocks. Marriage is hard, but marriage between a ghost and a living person has its own Unique challenges, and, and things seem to have started going south during the wedding itself. Mm. Here's the Daily Star. The ceremony had an open invite to the living and the dead, which saw the likes of Marilyn Monroe, Elvis, and Henry VIII arrive to the chapel. All greeted warmly, I'm sure, for the same reasons. Oh, hello, Marilyn. <laughs> oh, hello, King Henry VIII. Uh, Marilyn Monroe certainly caused a stir at the wedding reception. Wow. Okay. Brookhard said... Eduardo just couldn't resist winding me up and made an inappropriate comment about her looking hot. I was like, wow, really? It's our wedding day. The comment completely ruined my evening. Well, you shouldn't have, you had an open invitation. You should have known there's a lot of dead people that were really, really hot. Yeah. In lifetime. You should be stoked that Eduardo is paying so much attention to you when he has th the entire history of humanity in ghost form. Every hot person who has died lives in Eduardo's realm. Yeah. 
And uh, you should really embrace how special you are, obviously. Yeah. And uh, and also, wow, what a guest list. Yeah. Just amazing. It, it's crazy that, uh, I mean, I guess in the ghost world, they probably don't see this kind of thing almost never happens. So, no, yeah, it's, it, it's the social it event of the season. probably was lighting up ghost Twitter. Yeah. Or ghost X, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, they, uh, you know, and they... they hey, you guys going to Eduardo's thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be there because it's the only thing that's happened yeah. in 500 years. It's a pretty boring life as a ghost. Yeah. Pretty boring death, I mean. Uh-huh. Well, he continues with more on how the honeymoon didn't go so well. So oh, you, things got off on a bad start and it apparently got even worse. Broke hard, got covered in sand, and ended up with a cone of ice cream being pushed in her face <laughs> after Eduardo tried to get feisty with her on the beach and roll around near the sea. Brocard says, the whole trip just seemed to get worse and worse. Eduardo thought he was being passionate and romantic by wrestling me to the ground to frolic in the sand, but I was trying to share my ice cream with him and it went everywhere, all over my face, in my hair, and the, of course, the sand stuck to it, so I looked like I had a fight with a giant seagull. We should have been on an amazing honeymoon, but from that point on, it was just ruined. Eduardo has always been unpredictable, so it's typical that he would ruin our honeymoon. I would love got... to see video footage of her <laughs> just rolling around by herself. Eduardo, no! Oh, Eduardo, just no, not my ice cream. Smashing oh, herself God. with the ice cream. All covered with sand and melted ice cream. Eduardo, this is supposed to be our special our special week. No, I'm not crazy. I'm wrestling with my ghost husband. Yeah. It's totally normal ghost behavior. And he's from the Victorian era. They barely had Show ice cream. Show some respect. I don't think they had ice cream at all. I think it, ice cream debuted in like the 1890s. So, I mean, maybe he made the cutoff. God, but could you imagine the first time ice cream made a debut? Wow. You're never going to believe what they have down at the store. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like 1895, you're trying ice cream for the first time. Like, wow, they figured it out. The world is only going to get better over the next several decades. Nothing bad will ever happen <laughs> Things again. Things are on the up and up. Uh huh. The, the, 20, the first half of the 20th century, which we are rapidly approaching, is sure to be a golden age of happiness and peace. You can't wait. Cannot wait. If this is it, <laughs> I don't want anything else. <laughs> I heard they built a flying machine in America. Oh, yeah. That surely will only be used to transport people and and nothing else. You know what's good? Bread loaves. I don't see any way to improve it. No. I don't see any way to improve a solid loaf of bread. Well, get this, buddy. We got a machine. It's going to slice it. Wow. You, all right. And then they got this thing called the sandwich. You, you take all the things on your plate, you put it between those breads. Like the Earl of Sandwich? He, think he has a food named they, after him? He named it after him. Yeah. Wow. And he was at the wedding, too. Conqueror of the Hawaiian Islands? He was at the wedding, too. He's like, hey, by the way, I invented the sandwich. and Everyone's like, oh, yeah, sure. Elvis buddy. was really into that because Elvis ate the, that horrific sandwich with, like, peanut butter and bacon. and Bananas. Bacon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he was pretty. He's like, oh, that was you? Oh. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And yeah, a lot of people were at the wedding. Yeah, it's a, it was, like I said, it was like the king's coronation. JFK was there with his head half blown off. He's like, Marilyn, what the fuck? Hey, yo! Yes. Hey, by the way, looking pretty good. Just head flopping. RFK was there. He's like, my fucking idiot son. God damn it. My fail son. Anyway, but back to the story. Uh, adding more strain to this marriage, uh, it also turns out that Eduardo might have a drinking problem, which is very hard to wrap your head around since he is, of course, a ghost. Well, that's why they called him spirits. And <laughs> you would imagine that the, it just goes right through him. Yeah, well, that they need to drink more everywhere. for it to, uh, you know, <laughs> fully get into their system. I guess so. Uh, and yeah, he also seems to have some sort of feud with Santa Claus, of course. who is not a ghost, but I guess exists in the ghost world. I don't know. Here you go. Eduardo obviously doesn't have a bank card, so it is always me that has to pick up the tab everywhere we visit. And he certainly likes to go wild in our hotel room mini bars. Mm. Liquor bottles are always mysteriously left empty, aside from the gin bottle. They are always left standing. He's obviously not that partial to that spirit. When we arrived to our hotel, he suggested ordering 12 bottles of the best champagne to the room, knowing that I have to pick up the bill. And then here's the Santa Claus part. Brocard said, Eduardo is really jealous at Christmas. I have tried every day this week to put the Christmas tree up, but he just keeps knocking it over. He hates the thought of Santa coming down the chimney, and he even tried to board it up. I have told him that Santa visits everyone, and he doesn't have a crush on me, but he just doesn't understand. Yeah, well... In Brocard's world, I guess Santa is real. Anytime we were visited by a big fat man in my day, it was the king asking for, the, you know, the tax. Yeah. 
And, Pay uh, your tax. It's not my fault that the hotels don't take gold shillings. So, uh, odd to hear that he's not a gin drinker, though. Yeah, that is very unusual, but I guess he probably had I a love lot of American that. whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Those <Yanks>. bourbon. <laughs> I don't know what time it is. I guess America was founded by then, right? Yeah, America was around. I yeah. don't know if they were importing large quantities of bourbon. What was the Victorian era? Like late, teens, late it 1700s? Like, it was like 1800s? the... Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's the reign of Victoria. I don't know exactly when that... But yeah, the 1800s, pretty much. It is, it's always weird to me to think back on history and think that like there was this hoity-toity shit going on in England. And meanwhile, in America, they're just like, bang, bang, shoot them up. I'd ride the stagecoach. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking insane. It's took, wild. It took us a long time to live that down. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. But also a lot of them over there, they were very excited by this notion and uh, uprooted their entire lives to go take part. So, As they should. So who are you to judge? I'm not you judging. You loved it. I'm you just, loved it. I'm talking to them. Oh, yes. Edu Eduardo, very jealous. Europeans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it later came out that Eduardo really wanted kids, but Brocard didn't. How would that work? Well, uh, ectoplasm. <laughs> Kids like semi translucent. Uh, spooky ghost. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he started haunting her with the ghost of a screaming baby. That'll do it. And, uh, hey, you want more where this came from? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, uh, manifested a child with colic. Uh, is right. this doing anything a for you? A child with all of the early uh, childhood diseases that were common in my era. Uh huh. Yeah, it's got the black plague. Big deal. When ours won't, obviously. Yeah. He's probably pretty pro vaccine though. What? You What did they develop? What do you say? Uh so yeah, it doesn't seem like the best strategy to bring a screaming child into the mix, especially if that's what you want. It seems like it'd be off-putting. But you really can't blame Eduardo too much here. This is a man from the 1800s. You're lucky he even lets you leave the house. Yeah, he's probably calling her a whore constantly anytime yeah. she puts on like a t-shirt. He just whore. <laughs> Empty the chamber pot. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, on top of the dispute over whether to have kids, it turns out Eduardo had a lot of trouble staying faithful. Like, that, that goes back to the core of why yeah. I think he got mad in the first place. Mm -hmm. Here's the Daily Mail. Eduardo would then allegedly disappear for days at a time and return reeking of Miss Monroe's iconic perfume scent, Chanel No. 5. He would brush past brocade and the smell would fill the room. He had an unsettling fascination with Marilyn Monroe. It started on our wedding day when he spotted her in the chapel. Then he'd disappear for days on end and reappear, smelling of Chanel number no. five. I can smell her on you. That Marilyn Monroe, she's the Ariana Grande of her day. Mm. Just breaking up happy marriages. Just to say she could. Mm -hmm. Well, back in Eduardo's era, uh, perfume... Well, I probably existed. So also, like if you lived in the in England in the 1800s, Marilyn Monroe would be the much like ice cream. Marilyn Monroe would be the hottest person you've yeah. ever seen in your life. It, you, <laughs> excuse me. And like, yeah, this brocard. I mean, she's not hideous, but she's no Marilyn Monroe. I'll tell you that. If you if you're into the goth type, yeah, sure, maybe. But I mean, no Marilyn. They had those dresses back then that made their asses gigantic. They, they, they tied him up and it was like yeah. all huge back there. It was like here. a fucking like umbrella. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And they'd faint all the time. Well, that's why they had the fainting conscious. Yeah. Mm hmm So yeah, I, after less than a year of all this, Brocard uh, decided to get a divorce, which in this case meant returning to where she and Eduardo got married and staging an exorcism ceremony. The ultimate one. <laughs> which uh, yeah, she, of course, also recorded for the music uh, video for her new single. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure, would exorcism not only divorce them, but banish uh, Eduardo to like the shadow realm? Well, he deserves it. Did she kill Eduardo? I mean, if every claim in here is true, sounds like a pretty yeah, bad deal. Yeah, he's a real scamp, that yeah. Eduardo. That's what you get from messing around with human goth, goth chicks. Yeah, <laughs> another <laughs> patrol. <laughs> so as for what comes next, Everybody though. wants a big titty goth chick till the Ouija board comes out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here's the sun. Brocard has recently started dating again, but won't be looking to the spirit world for her next partner. She said, I'm now done with dating ghosts. I would never want to experience a relationship as turbulent as mine and Eduardo's again. The energy of being married to him was overwhelming at times. It broke my spirit and now I feel lighter. I underestimated how powerful his presence was going to be. And I feel like I approached the wedding with hope and naivety. Wow. So, but hey, it's been great for your music career. 
so I guess funny how that works. Yeah, I I wonder how many times that she you know cold called all of these papers like, hey, I got a new single coming that's out. The, that's the that's the like the main uh, takeaway here is whoever we don't really care about the music, but do you have anything about Eduardo going on? Whoever she's got running comms for her as like a I guess she's like a fashion designer. If I I don't know anything about this woman, but I would guess that she has rich parents. And but. Uh, but yeah, whoever's running PR for her is doing an amazing job because apparently no tabloid or morning TV program in the UK can say no to a story about a woman uh, dating a ghost, uh, talking about that relationship and reporting on it as if what they're just like, all right, these are the facts of the story, Yeah, because folks. before that, they just had to, it would be like the uh, weekly world news where they have just had to make it up. Now yeah. they have someone else doing the work for them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, these stories, they're appearing alongside, um, uh, stories presumably about real people doing real things. And it's yeah. just, uh, yeah. Got another Brocard and Eduardo update. Bad news, folks. You're going to want to read this. I hope someone does a seance and brings him back. I think she's going to end up missing him because like a lot of toxic relationships, uh, I mean. But we'd love to see the two on Maury. Yeah. Well, Maury retired. He's done. So we'll have to wait for them to show up on Judge Judy some kind of settlement claim after he comes back and wants wants a little something out of uh, the old relationship. Yeah. Either way, I can't wait to see Eduardo's first interview. I want to see his side of everything and, uh, yeah, see what happens. I mean, I don't know if he'll be able to talk, but I'm sure maybe a Ouija board. Yeah. Yeah. Pull out the Ouija board. So, Eduardo, what, what's things like afterwards? You're getting a lot of the... Get apparently, a, life a is, lot of gussy. Uh, a lot. Uh, apparently, after you die, life's pretty sweet. You kind of just float around, fuck whatever you want, and if you want to return to the human realm, so be it. As long as someone is yeah. willing to bring you into their home and fill you with liquor, it's that easy. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, speaking of weirdos over on that side of the pond, let's switch gears over to Ireland, which is very close to the UK geographically, but you you really don't want to get those two places mixed up. There's quite a bit of history there, most of it quite negative. Mm -hmm. And we saw some of that lingering resentment that the Irish feel towards the English when Queen Elizabeth died last year, and the somber atmosphere in the UK was contrasted by the jubilant celebratory atmosphere over in Ireland. They are not big fans of royalty, and Ireland hasn't had its own monarch since way back in the 12th century. Nevertheless, some dude named James Carey believes that he is the rightful king of Ireland, and it has caused him some legal trouble lately. So here's the Irish examiner, and as always, we apologize for what we are about to do to the Irish language. Uh, yeah, I'm, I butcher the English language, so please give me a break on this one. A county Meath man, describing himself as the sovereign king of Ireland, on Thursday asked a judge for orders against Bus Erin, that's the National Bus Service, and a member of Anne Garda Sishana Sikana, the National Police. James Carey told Judge Martin Nolan in the Circuit Civil Court that the driver of one of his privately owned public bus fleet had no jurisdiction in refusing him access to travel. Mr. Carey, whose address was given as Preston Hill, Stamelin County Meath, also asked Judge Nolan to direct that Agarda, who had issued him with a speeding ticket before breaking the limit by five kilometers an hour on one of his privately owned highways, had no lawful right to do so. You dare arrest the king? Wait, oh, that's English. Yeah. You dare arrest the king? The king? I'm the king of Ireland. I'm the king of Ireland. You work for me, motherfucker. This is my kingdom. Uh, it continues, he told the court that after his car had broken down, why is the king driving a car? Mm. He had attempted to board a bus with his dog and had been told by the driver he could not do so. Claiming that he was the rightful head of state, he said his country's Department of Security took a very dim view of the man in the Phoenix Park. When Judge Nolan, who gave the applicant a full hearing despite telling him there was no king of Ireland, told him his proceedings disclosed no proper cause of action, the claimed king told him such an order would amount to an act of treason. I own Ireland, I rule Ireland, and I am your legal employer, he told the judge. Kerry said the Garda had no right to approach him, never mind issue him with a speeding ticket. He added that he was entitled to ride his own buses and travel on his own privately owned highways. King James's testimony doesn't seem to have convinced the judge, but he says he plans to appeal. Hopefully he finds a judge who actually knows his place when he's in the presence of royalty. Uh, in any case, it seems like he'll probably be spending a lot of time in court if he keeps this up. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I'm the king. 
and we'd really like it if he could explain a bit further exactly and why he happens to be the King of Ireland. We would imagine that it involves some genealogy, but maybe not. The Queen of Canada, as we all know, Romana de Dulo, hasn't provided any actual reason why she's the queen, and she's managed to convince hundreds of people of her claim to the non-existent throne with zero evidence. So maybe, maybe King James is taking a page from her book, minus the whole running a cult thing, until it does get to that point. Everyone's gonna stop paying their bills. Yeah. Till I get out of this oh, little. Sounds good. Tell me more. Legal predicament. Uh, yeah, th- I, I do love that every version of the European version of, like, uh, the sovereign citizen movement that we have here is just people, like, making claims to, like, the throne or making claims that, like, uh, the government doesn't exist because uh, the, the Kaiser is still in charge mm. and shit like that. It's it's a lot more fun than just people being, like, reading the, the Constitution like they're magic spells and... Uh, thinking they can get out of speeding tickets. This is like, is no, this? you don't understand. I took a fucking 23 in me, and I am the rightful heir to the Irish monarchy that ended in like 1178. So... Is this guy Catholic or Protestant? I would assume Catholic, or maybe... I mean, maybe if he wants to get real into it, uh, he could be whatever was before that. Oh, uh, yeah. There you go. Because, you know, Christianity, it did, did, come with, uh, did come with the English. So... A lot of people don't want to talk about that, but y'all wouldn't be English without, or you all wouldn't be Catholic without the English, even though the English later. Got Nobody rid wants of it. to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. It's like a lot of Nazis are that way. They're like, <laughs> they're pagans because they're like, well, Christianity started with a Jew, so. Yeah, you know. Let's Weird. just get rid of it. I'm going to fucking worship Odin and Thor. Yeah. Uh, anyways, let's turn now to the ongoing saga of what? the hell is going on with all these aquatic animals? They are up to, well, I don't want to say no good because I appreciate some of the things they do. Something's happening. But yeah, something's going on. There's the orcas over in the Mediterranean sinking sailboats. There's sharks doing cocaine. There's gigantic whales in Mexico coming up to people uh, for a little pat on the head. There's sea otters attacking surfers to steal their surfboards. There's sea lions terrorizing crowded beaches. And now, coming straight out of Florida, We've got gay manatees literally fucking their siblings to death. I mean, that's something we might expect from dolphins, whose horniness knows no bounds. But manatees? Those big, fat, slow sea cows fucking each other to death? Incestually? Gay, incestuous, death fuck. This is what happens when the water heats up. It's like a giant jacuzzi. Yeah, I think, yeah. And everybody's horny. Yeah, you get enough manatees in the jacuzzi, get them comfortable enough, get them loose enough. Yeah. This is what happens. Yeah, hot water's like poppers for these things. Uh, so let's let's uh, turn to NBC Miami to find out what exactly is going on. A manatee died at a Florida aquarium in late April, and following a full pathology and necropsy report, there are new developments as to the possible cause of the mammal's sudden death. According to the Moat Marine... Hey! Is that you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to field trips a bunch of times there. The Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium in Sarasota, Florida, Ricky Town. Yep. The resident manatee, Hugh, died unexpectedly on... Not Hugh! <laughs> died unexpectedly on April... First snooty, Dan, now Hugh? It's a, it's a real bad time to be... Wow! ...a captive uh, manatee. Uh, Hugh died unexpectedly on April... April 29th, after showing changes in his behavior until he suddenly became unresponsive in his habitat. According to a statement following his passing, the aquarium said the manatee and his brother, Buffett, were the, <laughs> were the world's only manatees to participate in voluntary, detailed behavioral research designed to aid manatee conservation. But after a necropsy or animal autopsy and a full pathology performed by FWC's Fish and Wildlife Research Institute's Marine Mammal Pathobiology Lab, it was determined that Hugh died from a 14.5 centimeter rip in his colon and other traumatic injuries caused by a sexual encounter with another larger male manatee at the facility, Buffett, his brother. It be your own brother sometimes who fucks you to death. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, so Buffett the manatee apparently fucked his brother Hugh to death. These manatees, they're not dying in normal ways. It's always weird. Snooty got like... Uh, got stuck in a cave. Because he was too fat yeah. and got stuck. Um, so it seems like the right way for manatee to go. They are fat animals. That's sort of the thing. I mean, it's it's not better, but 
out in the wild. They just get shredded to pieces by boat propellers. So Yeah, they're just sort of floating there. They live a great life, except for when shit like this happens. They're literally sea cows. They just eat vegetables and float around. Yeah, they got it figured out. Mm-hmm. But uh, don't ever get taken captive, especially if it's for <laughs> voluntary research. Mm-mm. Come on. No. Uh, yeah, so we did, you know, we did. We got a little curious. Looked up what a manatee penis looks like, and yeah, it's too gross to share, but they're kind of packing. They're hanging dong. So, used for evil, a manatee penis could certainly inflict the kind of lethal damage described in this report. Mr. Flippers. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't sound like what happened here was anything but a consensual, incestual, gay relationship between manatees gone wrong. Gone sexual. Everything was fine until it wasn't. Yeah. From the article, according to the aquarium, this was the first time such heightened mating behavior was witnessed between the two manatees. Every year, however, like other male manatees, Hugh and Buffett would exhibit approximately two months of seasonal behavioral changes, including, but not limited to, an increase in sexual behavior, Moat Marine said. Although they were observed initiating and mutually seeking interactions from each other throughout the day, there were no obvious signs of discomfort or distress, such as listing, crunching, or active avoidance that would have triggered a need for intervention. Following the direction of the vets, distraction rather than physical separation was chosen because separation has previously caused undue anxiety and negative effects in both manatees. Florida representatives honor the sexual relationship of manatees being gay more than its own citizens. They can't just let their citizens be happy. Well, now this this is an example of why they can't allow anyone to be gay, because look what happens. This would be something that Ron DeSantis uses yeah. in a campaign speech. You want me to make it safe for people to be gay in this state? Look what happened to Hugh. You, yeah. want, you want that to happen to your children? Think about it. You it's, might be right. You might be onto something. It's sugar, man. Did you see <laughs> He, he got caught talking oh, about sugar again. Yeah. He's like, oh. Hey, that, what is that? A little oh, icy? A little bit of ice cream? Oh, there's a lot of sugar in that. Oh, what is that? An icy? Yeah, that's probably a lot of sugar, huh? Good to see you. Yeah, he is, uh, he's demonstrating even further uh, lack of riz than previously thought possible. There was another one where he was like at a, a farm and the kid was like, hi. And he goes, oh, what is that? A cow? And then just walked away. This, this guy isn't. He doesn't know how to have actual human interactions. It's like NPC behavior. He was a bully in high school. He went to college, uh, to a snooty school. He got out, tortured people in Guantanamo, <laughs> yeah, and then just started... Doesn't get talked a, about enough. Yeah, then started being a politician. Apparently, uh, uh, Vice had to shelve that episode. Yeah, they were worried about getting like sued or some shit, but yeah, it, uh, he, he, he... Allegedly. Cl- he claims he was just like uh, a lawyer at Guantanamo, but uh, there's a lot of evidence to suggest it might have gone... Deeper, he might have had a more active role in the torture that went on there. Uh, excuse me, Elliot. It is uh, advanced, enhanced, it, yeah, enhanced, enhanced interrogation. interrogation. But back to the manatees. Yeah, it seems like Hugh and Buffett. They... Named after Jimmy Buffett, I'm sure. Well, yeah, but who's Hugh named after? Hugh, I mean, this was 1996-ish when they were probably Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, yeah. Yeah, he was real hot back then. Mm-hmm. The Hugh and Buffett. Seems that they really did love each other sexually incestually. So yeah, this is kind of a tragedy. And not just a tragedy for the manatees, but also for the local Sarasota community, where Hugh spent 27 years of his life as somewhat of a local mascot, garnering attention every year when he and Buffett would announce their picks for who would win the Super Bowl. And they were right sometimes. <laughs> they were right sometimes. Can't if, win them all, though. 50-50 shot. They're going to be right sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, this tragedy also comes just a few years after another local manatee, Snooty, the world's oldest manatee at 69 years old, drowned after getting its fat ass stuck trying to enter a cave. See, I don't remember Hugh. Uh, I left Sarasota uh, in 2004, so it's been a while. Uh, so, But I mean, Snooty, they, I grew up with. They had Hugh and Buffett since the 90s. So you probably yeah. have seen I've probably seen manatees. him, but like didn't, you know. Well, Snooty was Snooty an icon. Was, yeah, well. So, and he had already been well known by the time I was a child. It was probably Hugh and Buffett that arranged for Snooty to get taken out. That's right. Snooty, they needed the... Snooty was getting all the attention. They're like, oh, you, the Sarasota, you know, Snooty, that's the manatee from Sarasota. They yeah. got statues of him and everything. And they're like, what about... And what Snooty about wasn't you? even Sarasota. Snooty was Manatee County, Bradenton. Yeah, it was totally the next different town county. up. But yeah, he was the icon, not these other manatees. Snooty, getting a bit too snooty. But yeah, I mean, so two, two big 
manatee deaths in just a few years. As if the people of Florida haven't been through enough and aren't going to definitely be going through more in the future. And now Ron DeSantis is probably going to blame this whole Hugh and Buffett situation on like woke library books or some shit. Probably say that a kid checked out a woke library book and then held it up to the glass. This is how you have gay sex. And then they fucking, they did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so just one more reason to uh, ban critical race theory. (laughs) This is what happens. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we've got the headlines half of the show coming right up. But first, this episode is sponsored by ZocDoc, something we all need after those last couple of stories. Uh, the, <laughs> this country's healthcare system certainly has some issues, one of which is that even if you are fully insured, actually finding a doctor who takes your insurance and then is available to see you can be a very annoying, time-consuming, and antiquated process. And the longer it takes to find a doctor, the more likely you are to fall down some internet rabbit hole of potentially questionable medical advice. And then, even when you find a doctor, it's hard to know beforehand whether they're the right doctor for you. Well, ZocDoc makes this whole process a whole lot easier. You just fill in what you need, where you live, what your availability is, and what insurance you have, and ZocDoc pulls up a list of doctors along with their availability, plus loads of user reviews to help you find the care that you need and book it with the tap of the finger. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for the ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 48 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments. Uh, Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few taps, no more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. This is definitely something that would have come in in handy so much uh, over the years, but it's finally here, so go to ZocDoc.com slash Weekly Weird and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That is Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Weekly Weird. ZocDoc. Dot com slash weekly weird. Yeah, definitely would have come in handy uh, just dozens and dozens of times throughout my life. Mm-hmm. So, very cool. This episode is also sponsored by AG1 by Athletic Greens, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. We both drink AG1 by Athletic Greens first thing every morning because it's not only the easiest way to make sure you're getting all your daily vitamins, it's also great for keeping that gut nice and healthy and regular. That's how you know it works. AG1 is just one scoop of powder and water, and it tastes great, and it makes you feel good. AG1 has all of your key health products like multivitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more working together as one. It's made with 75 super high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and so much more. AG1 is daily nutrition made really simple. With just one scoop, I get the nutrients and gut health support that helps my whole body thrive and covers my nutritional bases. AG1 has quickly become just as important as that first cup of coffee for me. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com weird. That's drinkag1.com weird. Right. Check it out. Time to get into the weirdest, wildest, craziest headlines from around the world. Every All these stories are nuts, but they're summed up quite well in just the fun headlines. So let's get right into it, uh, starting with... Trader Joe's recalls two types of cookies because they may contain rocks. Uh, well, you know, you guys wanted minerals. This yeah. is why you go with our other product, the, the, the sponsor of the show. Because if you get your minerals yeah. the other way, you're going to yeah. break your teeth. There's a better way to get your minerals. I... Which cookies were they? I haven't been to Trader Joe's in a while, but I used to be like, they had these vegan chocolate chip cookies that were... Yeah, you probably ate a bunch of rocks. Well, um, cool. But there's a lot of animals eat rocks. It's good for digestion, I think. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They they haven't... Ex- like, they're all off the shelves, obviously. And uh, I don't know how many this affected. It's probably an isolated amount. But still, how does rocks get into a cookie factory? Like, did they... They were like, all right, time to pour in the chocolate chips. Like, oh, no, this is a bag of construction gravel. Oh, geez. Well, just keep the conveyor belt going. I'm sure it's only a few cookies. Yeah. And then, uh uh-oh, now we're eating rocks. Imagine biting into a cookie and hitting a fucking rock. No, your tooth would break. Yeah. 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 I can't Mm. can't go there anymore. Everything is too... It's like a big candy store. Like, like, sure, they have the produce and they have, like, the normal meal stuff. But really, the, the heart and soul of Trader Joe's is they're just vast array of confections. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's how they get you. They are damn good, too. They, I know. They're too good. That's why I have to stay away. Yeah. They had these cookies one time. Probably had rocks in them. But they had these cookies one time. And I was like, that is a beautiful cookie. Came in a pack of two. I look on the back. I'm like, it's fine. I'm like eating it. Flip it over. One cookie had 800 calories in it. What? Yeah, it was insane. I mean, it, it, it definitely tasted like it did. But it was, and it was like, you know, it was like big. And uh, that's like an entire meal. Like, that's like a number one at like Burger King. Yeah. In a cookie. It <laughs> was, fuck? it was one of the best cookies ever. And then I, I turned it over and it was because it was like, uh, each cookie was supposed to be like two or three servings or something. Fuck, that shit should be illegal. I know. It definitely it's should. It's a cookie. Yes. Make smaller cookies. Well, yeah. or, you know, make it so that it says on the back that one cookie is yeah. 800 calories instead of, right. uh, you know. Other, like it was what, half cookie, 400 calories. Damn. But anyways, good stuff. The delicious uh, creations yeah. over there. Instead of biting into a cookie, take a. You know what's really good? They have delicate the, bite. Those tiny uh, ice cream cones. I'm not They're uh, like micro sized ice cream cones. You could technically eat them in one bite, but uh, oh, they're so good. Now I'm going to have to go by. No, I'm not going to. I, I, I am strong. I got my factors at home. They got uh, just the right amount of nutrients and calories I need to TJ's not turn into calling. a fucking fat manatee who gets stuck in a cave. Mm. It's so hot in Arizona, doctors are treating a spike of patients who are burned by falling on the ground. And this, this has been happening more and more uh, as, as things stay hot, especially in Arizona where it's breaking it records. 120 degrees last week. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the ground the is asphalt, just cooking. Yeah, the asphalt, like, I guess when it's that hot, the asphalt becomes like as hot as like a fucking uh, a pan on a stove. Yeah. Like it, it is boiling hot. And if you fall on it and yeah, like touching the stove, like even a brief contact like second degree will burn. give you second degree burns. And if you've fallen, you're obviously not getting up like instantly. So yeah, the, the burn wards in like the Phoenix area are just full of people. Also easier to trip on because it makes it like uh, squishy. It's not like a uh, asphalt specifically is not rock hard yeah. like concrete. It is uh, has some give to it. it lady goes walking out with her Louboutins, sinks right in, starts falling over. Yeah. She's toast. And there's a lot of old people in Arizona because the doctor told them to move there. They the, get their cane stuck. For the dry climate. Yeah. They... Whoa. Like Willy Wonka. It's bad. Except when they tumble, they just get stuck in the asphalt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So don't go to Arizona. Arizona was a mistake. We're sorry, world. Well, at least Phoenix was a mistake. There's some good spots in Arizona. Sedona, lovely. Go up north. Northern Arizona, beautiful climates, beautiful ecosystems. Phoenix, an affront to God. Yes. And a, a comically weird college where just a mockery for the entire country. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, everyone from ASU. No, they know. I think they do. They know. <laughs> yeah. It used to be like FSU was like the big party school. Now it's like, it feels like ASU is uh, untouchable. My brother got his master's from ASU, but did it remotely. Hmm. So it's just funny. Like, I'm sure every job interview he's going to have for like the rest of his party life. Party animal, like, huh? Oh, ASU. <laughs> like, How'd it. you survive? I did it over Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Wow. School librarian says his shoes melted while helping kids cross the street. And uh, again, Arizona. Yeah. The fucking, their damn shoes are melting off just being outside. It's not right. It ain't right. It ain't right at all. And then your shoe melts and you're, you're, you can't walk so good. Trip, you trip you and fall. fall. You got fucking third degree burns over half your body. You go out of the hospital, they're like, sorry, no room. Oh, you think you're the only one with third degree burns? Get in line, buddy. Get yourself a new pair of shoes while you're at it. You disgust me. Yeah, and That's Arizona. If, if you want to know like the evil side of this, just uh, think back about the past 20, 30 years or so where Sheriff Joe Arpaio was just specifically torturing people by yeah. keeping them outside. Putting them in outdoor concentration camps yep. in Maricopa County, which is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, not so fun anymore, is it, folks? And doing a lot of bad stuff. Arizona, they're, you know, this is what happens when you tempt the earth. It's a bad place. Well, what's the quote from King of the Hill? This is an affront like, to God or something? This place should not be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on. Universal fined a whopping $250 by City of LA over trimming trees near picket line location. Yeah, that's a little uh, disappointing update to a story from a little while back. Universal trimmed like 50 trees in the middle of the summer when you're not supposed to do that. Uh, they clearly did so so that 
Uh, WGA and SAG protesters wouldn't have any shade in our heat, which is not as bad as Arizona's, but still pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, our city controller was looking into it, trying to fix this, and uh, it turns out that the, lo the laws on the books mean that Universal gets fined only $250. This should, Because they don't this, do it by tree, and it's also a first-time offense. Yeah, this should be like a precedent-setting thing, where it's like, if you do it with the specific intention, I mean, that would be hard to prove, but a, a specific intention of causing the suffering of people by trimming the trees, it yeah. should be a little more expensive. Yeah. Maybe five. I, I was told that tree law was serious, but I guess not in L.A. I guess LA, you just, oh, for $250, I can cut down whatever tree I want? Yeah, you can cut down any tree you want with no permit, and as long as it's the first time you did it, uh, you pay $250. Yeah. Mm. Wild. Speaking of the strikes, stunt performer sets himself on fire to support SAG strike, which sounds a lot worse than what actually happened. It sounds like someone's self-immolating. No, it's a stunt uh, performer who did a stunt thing. Yeah. From the safety of the, like a bed of a truck or a stage or yeah. whatever, to not accidentally catch anyone else on fire. Those monks in Vietnam should have thought of this. Yeah. You know, oh, you can You put can set yourself on fire, on? but you can live. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, the, the stunt side of the strike is a side that doesn't get covered nearly as much, mm -hmm. but um, they have all sorts of serious, you know, grievances with the studios, because it's dangerous work that they're doing. Well, yeah, the guy that, <laughs> and, and they're out of work too, the guy that lit himself on fire was Harrison Ford's stunt double. Yeah, he did uh, Dial of Destiny, he's done a bunch of stuff, and yeah, sending yourself Which means fire. he was probably actually on camera more right. than Harrison Ford. Probably just deep faked, he did the whole movie. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, they, they, you know, being, being an actor and being like uncomfortable and tired, that's, you know, boo-hoo, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, being a stunt performer and risking your life and having those same sort of conditions, you could actually fucking kill you. So mm -hmm. this is cool. They should set themselves on fire more because it's it's got a great message and it's fun to look at. Yep. How is he on fire like that? He looks so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Real Barbenheimer. Theater mistakenly plays Oppenheimer with Barbie subtitles. <laughs> look, it's kind of fun. Obviously very distracting. But I would say less distracting than having the print completely fail yeah. during the screening. Also, I mean, it's not like you can hear any of the dialogue in Oppenheimer anyway, because Christopher Nolan, for some reason, loves to mix his movies in a really strange way. I, well, for the most part, I would say the last 30 minutes or so, I, but there was so much going on that it was kind of overwhelming anyway. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I didn't find it too hard to... Uh, it's every one of his movies. Maybe it's just a me thing, but like he, he just has the music too loud all the time. And yeah. the dialogue too low. And like, yeah, you can still follow what's going on, but it's still just like, what? Mm -hmm. what the fuck did he just say? Yeah. Um, I need to see it again for the last 30 minutes because there's just, there, the third act is just a lot of... A lot happening. Yes, a lot so going very, on. A, he crammed like a 10-hour miniseries into a three-hour movie. Mm -hmm. the, it, it moves very quickly. A lot going on. Mm -hmm. Great movie, though. I still haven't seen Barbie yet, but I will, I promise. Yeah, I'll get around You know, to I'm, it. I'm actually doing a big favor... I'm Reddit. letting the women, you know. Yeah, and I'm, the gays. I'm getting out of their way. Yeah, stepping aside, and That's then right. I am providing a substantial second or third week box office. That's right. They've already broken the records in the first week. Now it's time for the rest of us to help push it over. The uh, now it's the time for more. men to man up. And yeah, go there's see no Barbie. The, the, otherwise, big drop off. You gotta call up all your bros. Yeah, you know, and uh, say, hey, we're going to Barbie. Maybe you'll learn something. Yeah. No chicks. Sorry. Leave the wives at home. We're going to Barbie, boys. And, but we are wearing pink. We're wearing pink. Mm -hmm. Support Greta Gerwig. Our favorite. <laughs> Lady Bird was a very good movie. <laughs> Judeo-Christian roots will ensure U.S. military AI is used ethically, General says. Oh, fuck. They're definitely not using it ethically. Yeah, that seems That's like it would be a clear good. indicator that they would not be used ethically. This is transparently uh, alarming. Uh, buddy, the the U.S. military has had Judeo-Christian roots the whole time, and I don't know if if you've checked, but we we've had our own fair share of uh, atrocities. I read a book recently called "Kill Anything That Moves," which is named after an order that was specifically given to soldiers in Vietnam repeatedly from the very top: just go in there and kill anything. It is one of the most upsetting things I've ever read, and um, yeah, I'm I I'm. I'm sorry, but 
hearing that the U.S. military AI is going to be Judeo-Christian does not reassure me. Well, it's because given everything else I know, they're just using the past, you know, uh, two hundred years uh, of pre-written military lore right. to go off of. Much like ChatGPT writing sitcoms. Now, a this Muslim, is all they have. A Muslim AI. That's that's what you got to worry about. <laughs> but the according Christ, to this general, the yeah. Judeo-Christian AI, no, totally yeah. good. It's uh, it's going to be like, what would Jesus do? That's his prime directive. Oh God, the military's gone woke. It just wants to give people food. And, sh and shelter. Shit, hold on. Did we put the whole Bible in there or just the parts we like quoting? Yeah. Switch it out. All right, there we go. I think it's a little too much like Jesus. Uh, everyone's just being really nice. This AI sounds like a fucking communist. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It told us to melt down all of our weapons and uh, use it to use that money to, you know, f feed the poor, clothe the sick. That doesn't sound very Christian. <laughs> this is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Man previously caught standing on bucket having sex with horse while feeding it apples arrested for <laughs> trespassing on horse farm with his genitals exposed. Sheriff. Yeah, that's pretty much all there. Yeah. Right there in the title. Um, Not great. This is... Hey, at least he did Stop didn't, messing around with the animals. So, sounds like he was giving it to the horse as opposed to the other way, which as we know... Mr. Hands. That'll, that'll kill you. You'll get... What happened to Hugh is going to happen to you but 10 times worse. You're not going to like it. But uh, I don't think the horse likes it the other way around either. Even if you feed it apples while you're doing it, you think you're, uh, you think you're being a nice guy. You think you're being a gentleman feeding that horse apples while you take it from behind standing on a bucket. No. You, sir, are going to jail. I thought and horses kick. Bam! Could have uh, been real easy to kick. I guess maybe if you're like high enough. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I wouldn't stand behind a horse. Scary animals. Too big. Way too big. Being a like, you know, living, being a city boy, you don't see horses in real life too often. But there's a park near my house where someone I, through like some grandfather clause owns like a couple of horses that are like right off the trail. Mm -hmm. And you can walk up and see them. And they're, they're yeah, they're like, but the things are gigantic. You ever ridden a horse? Uh, yeah, just murdered my balls. Uh, yeah, you gotta have like you got you gotta have really good leg strength in those stirrups. So you're yeah, you gotta grip it with your thighs. Yeah, you're never like your balls aren't supposed to be sitting on the seat. You're supposed to be kind of suspended above it. But I was not prepared for that, and so I spent the whole ride just like this in Griffith. Yeah, Park. well, you're supposed to like lift up. Uh, along. Yeah, you're supposed to time it right and everything. Too. Yeah, there's an athleticism to it that I was just not prepared for, mm -hmm. and it beat the shit out of me. I was feeling it for weeks. It, it is a fun activity, but I st I can't help but feel bad for the horse every time I've done it. Yeah. Because they're like, all right, get it going. And it's like, I don't want to fucking kick this thing. Like, I know it's, it happens all the time. It's but not like, going to feel it. It's a big fucking thing. It's, uh. Yeah. I've really opened it up one time. I got it, got it going really fast and it felt so fucking cool. And I was yeah. like, okay, I survived that. It's kind of terrifying though. <laughs> yeah, they do it. They, 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 I'm not. I didn't fly off or anything. I had a great time, so yeah. uh, I probably won't seek it out again unless it was like the opportunity was just presenting itself. They got but... horseback rides at Griffith Park. Yeah, but that's just like a. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know when I went when my friend's horse uh, got spooked and just took off running like 40 miles an With hour. With him on it? Yeah. He was like, Whoa! <laughs> Hold on. This looked pretty pretty cool. Kind of scary. Pull back. You don't know what's happening. What's going on? <laughs> Wasn't raised around horses. I'm from the city. Where's the Where's the brakes? Yeah. Where's the brakes on this horse? And Ugh. final headline. Uh, this one will require a little bit of analysis, but here you go. Reedy Creek's governor-appointed board to cut $8 million in law enforcement over time on Disney properties. And the translation of that is that Ron DeSantis defunded the fucking police. That's right. He did it. Reedy, get, it get him, folks. Reedy Creek is the government around Disneyland we, or Disney World. We've talked about this. Yeah. Uh, Ron DeSantis is trying this like hostile takeover thing, uh, and he's installed his own little... Uh, governance board there and uh yeah they are cutting eight million dollars from local uh law enforcement uh as a way to spite disney but he is essentially defunding the police yeah no more mickey mouse tanks and i really hope donald trump seizes on this and he makes, will and makes an ad ron DeSantis talks a big talk but he just defunded the police he wants people to get murdered at disney world i think it's a great campaign ad yeah you should really twist the knife. There's a huge fly in here. Yeah, Anyways, that's, horse that, fly. that means it's our time to go. The horses have heard the show, and they're on their way to kick our asses. So we got to get out of here. Uh, if you haven't already seen... Damn. Uh, whoa, like the video. Like the video. 
Make sure you hit the like button, leave a comment down below, reply to a comment, say hello to some new viewers. Uh, it really helps the channel out. We really appreciate it. In the meantime, we got a rundown on uh, Trump's various crimes. A lot of crimes. He's uh, racking them up. Potentially four indictments. So uh, they're like Pokemon cards. He's going to get them all. And it's... Yeah. It's sad. But anyways, uh, it's not sad. It's, it's not sad at all. No, it's 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 great it's, that he... It's really... It's very legal and very cool. Potentially will see justice. Anyways, uh, that whole video is right there with some more in it. And then we also have Rosalcom pleading guilty. A lot of crime stuff this week. So check both of those videos out. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.